Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome. Today we're going to focus on integration CellPoint has with bots and RPAs. I'll be your host today. My name is Donovan Blaylock, and I'm a technology evangelist here at CellPoint. So for those who don't know, what does CellPoint do? Uh, identity governance is see everything, govern everything, empower everyone is our motto. Uh, to that end, we'll go through very briefly what we do as a company, and then we'll dive down in quickly to what's referred to as bots or RPAs, robotic process automations. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So um, <clears throat> all applications, all data. This does include bots. So they may have access to cloud applications, on-premise applications, likely a combination of the two, especially when they're pulling in report data. Um, also structured and unstructured data. By that I mean structured data being systems and access to systems. Unstructured be files and folders, very commonly, where information can be stored, put into a, a, a format that it's helpful to your organization, and stored for long-term consumption use. Now the files and folders often have a very different management structure. In other words, you may have access to a file or folder three or four ways, depending on the groups you belong to, or individual access to files and folders um, that they exist in. So these are some common activities around every identity that we manage and govern. <clears throat> so certainly automated provisioning, join or move or lever, if you will, um, requesting additional access, password management, um, data access governance, um, identity analytics, being able to use machine learning to suggest things along the way. And then of course, compliance controls. We're gonna focus probably most on the automated provisioning and the compliance controls today with RPAs and bots. So as an overview, this is kind of how the cell point solutions work. Um, we have all those functionalities we talked about across the top, across you know, the, all the users, applications and data. And we connect to things various ways. Um, APIs are great. Um, we also have plugins. We have SDKs where necessary. And we have some deep dive integrations, in particular with the SSO, MFA worlds, um, and with the PAM vendors out there, as well as some key others like SAP and clinical EHR systems. Um, but the applications, regardless of where they reside, we integrate into. And this, of course, is very applicable to bots. So let's focus on governance of RPAs and bots throughout the organization. <clears throat> we are seeing more often now, this become a very um, important part of the governance discussion when we're going into organizations. We are seeing several organizations that are customers of ours that have significantly more RPAs or bots than people in the organization. And we often come into the discussion of what's the difference between a bot and a service account. So um, they could be the same thing, but a bot is typically more complex than a service account. It typically uses multiple types of authentication. So it uses multiple accounts to connect into different systems to consolidate data in a regular basis and perform some action. So it typically is more complex than a typical service account out there. And these things can often be done um, for reporting purposes, to pull in data for accounting, um, to pull in data from all these multiple systems out there and pull that data in and put it somewhere useful to the organization, to the reporting, to the business side, et cetera. Those sorts of things happen on a regular basis. So that's what a bot is, if you're not very familiar with what it is already. Um, <clears throat> so we've extended our attributes to be able to support bots as an individual kind of entity in our environment. The reason for this is pretty simple. It has different rules. Um, this is not a person, but it does have a life cycle. It does need to be governed and certified and reviewed and have their access looked at. It does need to have an ownership group, somebody that it reports to that's responsible for it. So often we're seeing an organization that all these RPAs or bots need to be certified typically once a year. Um, during an audit scenario, you may have to do that uh, ad hoc as the system goes through or as holes are identified in your enterprise but we're able to manage bots and their attributes just like we would an identity inside our world. Um, we can do access requests for bots, um, certify them, very important as well, and create policy definitions, creating uh, segregation of duty policy violations for bots to prevent them from doing things that might not make the most sense from a security perspective. We're gonna deep dive really quickly into some, some geeky parts of this, then I'm gonna show you a little bit of product. 
Then we'll come back and discuss and answer any questions you might have. So this is the type. We added a new type field out there as well to include RPA bots. This could be employee, this could be contractor, this could be service account, this could be bot. There are several types out there. The reason why we wanted a specific type for our praise or bots, I'll show you inside the product, but we can quickly do a search and look for all the bots that exist in a particular part of the enterprise. Then we can report on it and very quickly create a certification campaign if wanted. We'll show this in a minute, but this is how we're gonna go through and do a search for bots that currently exist in a particular part of the enterprise and allows us to take action on those particular bots found inside that search. We'll focus on this in a little bit. So inside the report results, any report that we do can break things down by type. So it's very interesting sometimes to break things out of employee versus contractor versus partner versus bot versus service account, or if you've added some additional identity types in your enterprise, which we see in certain verticals out there, um, you can also have things like student uh, be a very, very common one there as well. Um, so these things allow you to break out all the existing reports that we provide to both your IT staff, your security staff, and your audit organizations as well. And breaking that up by type will help in that endeavor. So without further ado, I think I'm gonna hop over to products. And let's actually look at stuff. Okay. I am logged into SailPoint's Identity IQ platform, and this is a administrator's view. The name, administrator's name is Jerry Bennett. Inside here, there's uh, you know, various cards for things that Jerry does on a normal basis or should be concerned about. And you'll see inside here, there's all sorts of actions that can be taken a look at, um, really helpfully coded, you know, red, yellow, green as opposed to, you know, what, what things should be focused on at one point in time. You'll see in particular, Jerry's responsible for three of these RPAs. And here are the three RPAs Jerry's responsible for. We can drill down and they look very similar to any other identity in the enterprise. So in here they have attributes, they have access granted to them, where you store all the history of the access as well. Um, we can forward information, but Jerry's responsible for these three particular bots in the enterprise. Now, if Jerry would like to, Jerry could also go through and create additional bots with different capability sets. So if you wanna to go to manage identity, then go through and create identity, and it'll allow Jerry to create an additional bot in the enterprise if he wishes, so that you can have some additional ones to perform some additional actions going forward. And this is okay. Um, what we're seeing is in organizations that have a large number of RPAs and bots, they typically have invested in a company very, very specialized in the creation um, and, and version control and everything else of just bots and RPAs, and we'll talk about those integrations and those partners that we deal with on that part of the world here at the very end of the segment. So we do have both options out there. We can integrate in somebody that does this for a living and they're a very specialized product, or we can enable somebody to create their own bots inside the enterprise, or we can go out and attempt to detect bots as well if they're attributes that help us easily find what they are. But inside here, as mentioned before, I'm gonna show you kind of why we care about this. And we're gonna look at some intelligence and some of these advanced analytic reports. So inside here, let me clear this. I've already done my search. <laughs> so what I've done in here, and you've already seen the result, is I've gone in and I've done a search for identity attribute type equals RPA bots. Now, if I want to break this down even more into a cost center, a department, a location, et cetera, I can search for bots specific to certain parts of the company or the organization as well. So you'll see that in the very first page we had, Jerry had three bots that he's responsible for that he has to certify on an annual basis. But you'll also see when we run this search that there are actually some other bots out there. We have one other bot, so there's four bots total. Typically we'll come back and we wanna have reports for somebody that is focused like Jerry on the IT security part of the enterprise and also involved with audit reporting. So that person needs to be able to see all, but personally responsible for a few of them as well. And the reason we like to do this to create a user or a group that is responsible for these bots is so that we have, you know, 
uh, a person to reach out and touch if something happened. So in this inventory processing bot, <clears throat> excuse me, the administrator is Jerry Bennett. This could be an AD group. It doesn't have to be an individual. Um, so this could be any sort of group responsible or an individual. And as Jerry Bennett, if you were to leave the organization or change in the organization, we'd be able to transfer that very quickly to another person automatically to be responsible for these bots. But it's very common that somebody be responsible for these bots or RPAs so that we can reach out on an annual basis and have them review their access and take a look um, and manage if they need to change their access in any way to accomplish additional tasks for that particular bot or RPA. <laughs> Sorry, this uh, gets very particular. Um, so here's some partnerships we're working on right now. We have customers that use some pretty common applications that specialized in the provisioning, creation, version control, um, touch point creation of bots out there. Um, Blue Prism being a really popular one out there. So we are actively engaged in trying to integrate into Blue Prism currently at a couple of customer sites. And we're probably focused quite a bit of effort there going in the future so that we can quickly integrate to identify all of the bots and RPAs that exist out there as known to the Blue Prism application and then instantly apply them into our enterprise. Kofax is another one out there that's very popular um, that does a lot of bot creation, some search, um, some of the AD entitlements as well. Um, but we typically take over when it comes to entitlements. We can either read them or we can apply the ability for somebody to do an access request um, for these things and our very business friendly interface, which we're quite well known for. So this allows us through these partnerships to go out there and, and do some additional functionality. So with that being said, um, I'll thank you. This recording will be available on our YouTube channel, also on our webpage, if you'd like some more information. Now I'm gonna hop over really quick and see if we have any questions from the attendees. Please use the Q&A panel or the chat panel, whichever one, I'll pick them up both if you have any questions that you feel like I have not answered already. <clears throat> so this is a pretty interesting question. Would we be able to identify which bots have not been used in a certain amount of time, therefore identifying that for the reviewer? Yeah, so we can. Um, in particular, when we integrate into those other applications, they can pull in usage data very easily. It really depends on the application with which they reach into, whether or not we can pull that data easily and quickly. Different applications, Active Directory, you know, having that information um, is something we can do. Um, but some applications do not have last logon date. If we can integrate with a SIM provider in your organization, that is usually the best source of that information. When was the last time that this service account, this bot, use this particular piece of access. And then we can easily and quickly provide that inside the certification screen for administrators and people responsible for the bots to decide whether or not they should continue to exist. Um, these are a security vector point going forward. They can be very risky. They typically have access with which they can pull data and information out of applications, which means they're not a standard user. Um, so that information is very important as well. So that's a great question, thank you. Okay, one other question coming in. Um, so I'm trying to just dissect what it's saying here. Yeah, so on the reporting side, um, really the question is around reporting. So on the reporting side, we can pull in information about the bots. We can also pull in all the historical information. This is very common in the SailPoint platform where we can pull in information about the history, where it started, who requested it, who approved it, what are the timestamps, what are the dates for each, when things have changed over time. Um, so I think this question was more around if we're doing a security review incident after a bot or RPA that we feel has been compromised, can we look at the history behind it? Absolutely. So the history of how, how this bot got the access when they got the access, who requested it, if there's an approval in there as well, all that information is permanently recorded in what we call the identity cube for that bot, just like it would be any other identity in the enterprise. Okay, I think that's all the chats we have for today, unless I'm missing something. But I'll be cognizant of your time. 
If you have any additional questions, reach out to sellpoint.com. In the top part of there uh, on the page is going to be access to many of our capability sets. This video will be available on there as well, as well as our YouTube channel. Please check it out. Um, also, if you would like a deeper dive demonstration on our capability sets here, please reach out and request a demonstration on the top hand, right hand side of our page. And as always, if you'd like, please follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn. I'll be posting more of these as time goes on. Thanks for your time today and have a great day.